stories of the Bible. Solomon asks for wisdom. This is Solomon. Hey there! Solomon was the king of Israel after his father David. Solomon loved God, and God was with Solomon and made him very powerful. Oh, yeah! One night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. Whoa! God said, What do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Solomon said, You showed great and faithful love to David, my father, and now you have made me king in his place. But then Solomon said that he felt like a child who didn't know his way and that there were so many people of Israel to lead. So Solomon asked God for wisdom. He asked for an understanding heart so that he could rule God's people well and know the difference between right and wrong. God was happy that Solomon asked for wisdom because it showed that his greatest desire was to help God's people. God said, I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Whoa! Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. Huh! Wow! He went back to Jerusalem and made sacrifices to God. God did give all he said he would to Solomon. Solomon was known as a wise king and ruled God's people with wisdom for many years. Right, welcome to the vineyard. Grab yourself a seat. Uh, we may need to put some more seats out. Would someone like to grab some more seats? Bart? Uh, Laura? Laura, could you grab a couple of guys to bring more seats out? Yeah, thanks. Cool. Unfortunately, you've got to start on a low note. Who the heck brought this to the kids' cell? Come on, own up. Who was it? Who was it? How dare you? How very dare you? Please take it, somebody, before I do something with it. Right, uh, click. Right, who wants to do boy, girl, dog, cat, mouse, cheese? You did it last week, Tim. You did it last week. Or I'll grab a parent who has a child in the room. You'd have to do it for them. So quick, nudge your kid. Nudge your kid. I think Emily wants to do it for Reuben. You want to do it for him? <laughs> it's a guess. <laughs> so it's Jericho. Boy's name, girl's name, dog, breed, cat, breed, mouse, breed, or cheese type. Cheese. No, try again. Thanks, Ted. Bye bye. Boy, well done. Yes, yes. Second go, very good. Have some sweets. Full of E numbers and sugar. Right, click. Last week's Kids Quest, what is the size of the smallest piece of seahorse? It was 13 millimeters, it's the smallest one. Click. This week's one is, if you were to drink one brand of Coca-Cola a day, how long would it take you to get through the whole Coke range? Okay, that's today's. So it will be three weeks, would it be three months, would it be three years, or another answer? How many uh, type, different types of drink do Coke do? Okay, uh, click. Right, my friend Rob is gonna come up and talk to us about a miracle that happened to him. Uh, okay, got that side, cool. Uh, just make sure you're in front of the camera, Rob. Stand, stand in front of the, stand in front of the, Hello. Hi there. Um, my voice is still a little bit um, not normal because I've, I've had COVID. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> um, this happened quite a long time ago, back in the 1990s, which a few of you are old enough to remember. Um, probably not many of you. Anyway, um, basically what happened was um, I had a growth um, and it just appeared and uh, it didn't disappear and I thought well, I ought to go to the doctors but this is a bit embarrassing and I sort of didn't do anything and I never thought about 
crying, which is really a bit pathetic. But anyway, I didn't. And as it happened, I was um, visiting some friends of mine. Uh, I probably after work, so I must have been working somewhere up in that part of the world, Cambridgeshire or somewhere. Um, because I went to visit them and I was staying over at their house, which was in literally the middle of nowhere in uh, the Fens. Um, you know, if you, in those days, you, you, you could, if you Google, or whatever it was then, that their address, you got a green square and a red circle for their house and there was no road in sight. They were well over a mile from the nearest public road. Anyway, I went to bed there and I was thinking, I really ought to pray about this, this thing. So I prayed um, about the growth and went to sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, it had vanished, and there was no sign that it had ever been there. That's it, basically. That is brilliant. Thanks, Rob. It's, and it's a good question there that Rob's kind of thrown at us. Is when something like that happens, is, is prayer the first thing you do, or is prayer the last thing you do? It's a very interesting question, isn't it, about where do you go when something like that happens? It should be the first thing, shouldn't it? But it's often the um, last thing. Uh, we've got another DVD, haven't we, Tim? Yes, the uh, Don't Worry one. Yep, cool. This is thankful. Don't worry. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus did many amazing things. He taught everyone about God's love. Healed people from their sickness, and even calm storms. <laughs> One day, Jesus was speaking to thousands of people. Hey, Jesus! When someone asked him about money, he told them a story and tried to explain to the people that our treasure is not on earth, but in heaven. Then he turned to one of his disciples and said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear, for life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Uh, yes. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, because God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to God than any birds. Uh, yeah, I think so. Do you think that by worrying about anything, you can add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't do a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? That's a good point. Look at all the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, the great king of Israel, in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown away tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. And don't worry about what to eat or what to drink. Hey, okay. Many people worry about these things, but God already knows what you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, for it makes God happy to take care of you and give you his kingdom. So share what you have with others and give to those who need. There you go. Thank you. Sorry. Hi. Then you'll be storing up treasure in heaven. And when your treasure is in heaven, it's gonna be safe. No thief can steal it. And no bug can destroy it. Man, whatever. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Aren't they great, those cartoons? I learned so much about the Bible from those cartoons. Uh, right, as you may know, we're not allowed pets in here, but there is a bird in here today. Who can spot Peter the penguin and win a bag of sweets? Who wants to spot Peter the Penguin? Where is Peter the Penguin? Ethan. You have to know where it is for your hand. Put put your hand up, unfortunately. Where's Peter the Penguin? Tim. Under Paul's arm, that's right, yes. Well done. Fantastic. Brilliant. Right, let's have some worship, shall we? Why don't you stand up and we will do some worship? <clears throat> that doesn't sound right, does it? We will worship the Lord in our hearts. That sounds better, doesn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> you are the same yesterday, today, forever. 
Lord, and we can rely on you all the time. We can rest in you. Even when life doesn't seem to stack up the way we thought it would, Lord, we can rest in you and know that you don't change. You are constant. You have all the riches in heaven, like uh, Solomon and Jesus were telling us in the, in the cartoons. You have everything, Lord, and everything you have is ours. And we praise you this morning, Lord. We worship you. We come before you, Lord, just to say thank you, Jesus. Well, isn't it typical? I learned a load of the DTI youth stuff and thought, I'll do some this morning. And there's no youth. <laughs> oh, look, they're over there hiding. They're normally over there somewhere. Hello, guys. You're right. So you might recognize some of these. You might not recognize my version of it. But we can all learn them anyway, can't we?
God of Abraham, no, the God of covenant, faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you will do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same, yeah. Your history can prove that there's nothing you can do, faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness.
Come to the fountain. Come dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away. And the waves of his mercy, as deep cries out. I surrender to the safety and the peace of your everlasting arms. And I know though the world around me is raging. You are faithful and unchanging, yes you are, my shelter through it all. You 
are faithful and unchanging. I shelter through it all. In you, in you I find my refuge, my harbor in the storm. Still I raise my voice, I'm crying out for you to come in you. In you I find my refuge, my harbor in the storm. Still I raise my voice, I'm crying out for you to come. I know I know that there is rest for the weary strength for those in need still I'm on my knees and crying out for you to come I know There is rest for the weary, strength for those in need. Still, I'm on my knees and crying out for you to come. In you, I find my rest. harbor in the storm Still I raise my voice I'm crying out for you to come I surrender to the safety and the peace of your everlasting arms. And I know, though the world around is raging. You are faithful and unchanging. You are shelter through it all. In you I find my refuge, my harbor in the storm. Still I raise my voice, I'm crying out for you to come, crying out for you to come. Jesus, we just cry out to you now, Lord. All those things we need, Jesus. Lord, we live in a very affluent society in the top ten richest countries in the world, Lord, but we have still have deep needs that we can't use money to buy, Lord, and we come for you, come before you now, Lord, with no money, in poverty, Lord, poverty of soul, and say, Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus.
Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Oh, I feel really done in by that. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> Uh, a big thank you to everyone who prayed for Laura this week. Laura's had a Ofsted surprise this week. Um, we think he's good, but we're not allowed to say that. We think it might even be outstanding, but don't tell anyone until it's official. So thank you very much. You prayed for Laura this week. Uh, much, much uh, appreciated. Um, it's been a, you know, a down and up week for us, let's just say. Wednesday was not a good day in our household. <laughs> Um, right, uh, a warm welcome if you're here for the first time to the vineyard. Come as you are, we love newcomers. Take your newcomers, newcomers back. Travel mugs and kids' bottles are free for you to take and give us a feedback card. Click. And if you are here for regular, come on Sundays, join a small group, uh, serve on Sundays, give regularly, and invite friends. Keith, have you still got the basket? It's going round. Can you send the basket round, please? Uh, there are chocolates, hopefully, left in the basket, uh, if the kids haven't uh, ravished them already. Click. So we're celebrating Black History Month uh, this month. Uh, we, we're a shortened service today, so we're not going to look on the subject today, but it is all over Facebook, and it will be next week as well. Uh, we are celebrating uh, uh, integration, diversity, all those things that we should be doing for getting every tribe and every nation into heaven. Uh, we are practicing that on this earth this month in particular, but then beyond that. It doesn't have to end on October 31st, does it? It should go beyond that. As it was very, very clearly said uh, this month, it's not Black History Month, it's History Month. This is our history. Click. Uh, energy crisis. Uh, we are ramping up our supply of food vouchers. If you find yourself or somebody is short of food and you're paying energy bills, then come to us. We have some food vouchers to give you. Uh, I think they're, they are usable in Iceland or m &S, So any one of those extremes you can go to, depending on your taste, shall we say. Uh, bargain hunting, we're going to start a group soon, an actual online group to look out for bargains. Uh, more details about that soon. And again, warm hubs. I'll scratch over that one. This, the, this Sunday, because we're going to talk about that next hun Sunday. Christmas hampers. Uh, if you've been shopping, <laughs> you'll know it's poor, according to you know, Sainsbury's and m and it's Christmas already. They're selling loads of stuff uh, in their shops. Uh, if you see anything that's a good offer you think we're going to hamper, please buy it for us. Uh, we intend to do some Christmas hampers uh, in December. Please help us out with that if you want to. Uh, bring and share lunch. That's coming up next month. Uh, and if you have any ideas about how to... Uh, resolve the energy crisis if you know any good tips uh, any ways to get le uh, pay less for more that kind of thing then do get in touch with us if you see anything on the internet forward it on to us uh, that will be really really helpful uh, click we are doing the shoebox appeal that will be next month so if you want to collect items for the shoebox appeal we're going to send out a list of things you can put in a shoebox that goes to I think it's Eastern Europe and or Africa they get sent to. Um, I mean, there are, I think they, at one stage they've given out a million of these boxes. They were transporting a million of these boxes from the UK to Europe and to Africa, which is phenomenal. So we want to get in on that. Uh, we're joining with another, another church to do that as well. But if you have any, if you want a shoe box to fill, or if you have items to put in a shoe box because you, you can't fill a whole one, uh, then bear in mind we're going to be collecting those over the next few weeks. Uh, click. Uh, that's next Saturday now, the Leaders' Day. There are a couple of spaces left if you want to go on that. Uh, it's aiming at preaching, worship and youth leading uh, and then general stuff as well. So there will be like a general session and they'll go split into seminars for preaching, worship and youth leading. If you want to come along to that, give us a shout. It is totally free with lunch provided. Click. Uh, and Chill and Chat is next Saturday evening as well. Uh, that's at Dyes for Ladies. Um, that is next Sunday, next Saturday at 7.30. Details on media this week. Uh, I'll have a chat with Di if you want to go along to that. Uh, and Cheryl as well. Are you involved in that? Or is that just Di doing that? Just Di, okay, right. Cool. Click. And uh, Leadership Potentials starts... What's today? The 9th. Not tomorrow, next Monday. So if you want to look at some of the Vineyard Leadership Potentials, it is a course, so you will have to sign up for it. But you can come just to the first one and see what goes on. It's about all things leadership that we would do from a vineyard perspective. So it helps you to lead uh, in a vineyard way. Uh, the course is across two years. It's once a month online, uh, and it's a feeder into Vineyard College, which is like the Vineyard Bible College that uh, feeds people through to um, 
uh, more professional roles. Click. Be the Bridge, we think he's going to start the last Thursday in October. Um, more details about that very, very soon. But I would advise you at least to come along to the taster. The first one will be a taster. He'll be looking at what the course is about. Uh, if, you, if you're any way inclined with regard to wanting to uh, diversify the, um, the, 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 our, our, our population or want to move towards reconciliation in any kind of way, it will be really good if you came along at least to the first session and saw what it was about. Uh, I can highly, highly recommend it. Click. Bowling is now on the 13th of November. We're likely to do a bring and share lunch as part of our um, energy crisis uh, attack this, uh, this, this, this winter. So we're going to probably do church, then a bring and share lunch, and then go bowling uh, afterwards up in Chalkwell with Di and Ed, who uh, have a, a membership there. Click. Anything I've not put on there? Grab every group tomorrow. That's a sorting group. Book club tonight. Uh, everything else you can see on there, can't you? Yes, I'll leave you to just uh, peruse that. And click. So we were looking at uh, miracles uh, and kind of a bit of the, the, the theory and the theology behind them a couple of weeks back. This is kind of the end of that talk. Uh, we're going to finish early today because we've had the book sale and uh, there's no official kids' work, so we're going to end after this. Um, it's just a look at the difference between miracles and healing. They are, they, are, they are mentioned as different gifts in the Bible. So healing is a gift. Miracles are a gift. Obviously, there's a crossover because they're very, very similar in nature. But this is really to encourage you. Like what Rob was saying earlier, you know, the, the, the last thing he thought about was praying. This is something whereby, you know, some, some people instantly think of miracles. Some people may be thinking of healing and a different kind of way to do things. So this is kind of a, a difference between the two. So we've got, for a start, we've got miracles happen instantly. So you're talking about Moses and the Red Sea. He raises his staff over the Red Sea and the Red Sea parts. Happens instantly, probably within a second, something immediately happens. And sometimes you would have heard miracles here about that. Um, so, for example, Raquel's one about the nosebleed. That was an instant one. So it happened within like a few minutes, a few seconds. Um, whereas healings... Uh, they can happen over a period of time. So you pray for somebody or you pray for something about, your, about yourself and it takes maybe a week to happen or it happens overnight. You're thinking, like with Rob, you know, he prayed about something and the following morning the growth was completely gone. So it doesn't happen instantly. Oh, but then again, we don't know during the night when it happened with Rob, but it's one of those things that happens over a period of time because sometimes, some of us work at a slower pace than others. Some of us are extroverts. Some of us are introverts. So extro extroverts tend generally towards miracles. That's a gen big generalization, but I'm trying to help you out here with encouragement. And introverts generally tend towards healing because they live at a slower pace. So you may want to think which of those two you kind of like fall into. So a miracle will happen in a second. A healing might happen in a week. So um, uh, one of my stories is that um, when we first started Alpha, uh, way back 19, 20 years ago in church, the first Alpha course we did, we had a fantastic group of people on it. There was about eight or nine of us, and a couple of them for, from Laura's school. Laura worked at South End High for Girls at the time, and a couple of teachers from there came along to the, to the Alpha course. And one of the ladies was, she was absolutely adorable. I loved her as a, as a person and a friend, but she was really cynical about the material. And she would often kind of like come out with, she was, she, she was devil's advocate. She was playing devil's advocate and she'd say things like, oh, what's that about? I've never seen that happen. That kind of thing. She would kind of, she, she would question everything, which is exactly who you want now, of course, as long as you've got the answers to answer what she's saying. Uh, so if you've ever done Alpha, it's about a 10, 13 week course. And one of the, weeks is on healing. When we got to the healing week, it's one of those ones where, um, if you've ever seen the one they, they filmed for, ITV filmed a, a course for Alpha from HTB, Holy Trinity Brompton, where it first started, and they filmed it, they, sh they showed you what happened with the each, each week, each, each different subject. And when they got to healing, it's one of those, it's got to work this week, otherwise there's no point in doing this. So you've got to have some kind of ministry, some kind of thing happen to, to obviously to corroborate the fact that you're talking about healing and healing happens today as it did 2,000 years ago. Um, it's that kind of material. So we were talking about this, you know, Jesus did it 2,000 years ago on the Alpha course and it also happens today as well and we're going to practice that. 
So as it, as it happened at the time, I was the, the, the client or the victim, um, and I'd been having an ingrowing toenail on this foot, uh, and it had been bugging me for about a year, so it would kind of, it would start to kind of grow in the different direction. I'd medicate it, I'd put loads of cream on it, put a plaster on it, and eventually after three weeks of agony, it would kind of slowly go down, and I could be able to, you know, cut it and work out what it was doing. But it was kept recurring again and again and again, it was really annoying me. And the day before we'd, we were doing this alpha on healing, uh, it started to happen again, and it started to really, uh, I find it difficult to walk, uh, and I find it difficult to put shoes on, and I went to the to the healing course and said, okay, I've got something we can pray for tonight. Why don't we pray for my, my ingrown toenail? It was just about to start raging for the next two to three weeks somewhat on my foot. And this uh, cynical lady <laughs> said, okay, well, if this works, I'll try it. I'll pray a prayer and I'll lay hands on your gross toe and we'll see, and we'll see what happens. Uh, which is exactly what she did. So we, we, kind, of, we kind of led her to, to show her kind of how to pray, so keep it simple, say, Jesus, can you come and heal Dave's foot? Uh, because this is called us in real pain. It's just, just, just a, literally a couple of sentences. You don't have to do more than a seven-second prayer for a miracle to happen these days. And she, she prayed for me, and at, we, we carried on with the, with the evening, had drinks and coffee and left, uh, uh, everything and, and left, and I didn't notice any difference. But by the time I got home, my toe had completely returned to normal. There was no pain at all. Nothing happened for the next three weeks. And I've never had that again. Uh, I don't know what was causing it. I don't know whether there was something stuck in my toe, what it was. But whatever was happening, it never happened again. And of course, the following week, we go back and we talk about this with um, Lynn, who was the woman who was uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the one that was questioning everything. And it kind of became a running gag in the group that she had that, the finger of healing, you know. And it was a really, really good, it kind of lifted the whole course. It took us through a whole kind of uh, uh, way of teaching the Bible. The fact that it was real and it had happened, they could see what had happened, was just fantastic. So not an instant miracle, but it kind of happened but with the two or three hours between when she prayed to when I actually got home. It was absolutely brilliant. So some things happen instantly. Some things happen slower. You may want to say that maybe the instant ones require more faith. Possibly that might be a bit controversial thing to say, but if you're if you're praying for something to happen instantly, then you're going to have to have faith in that particular second for it to actually work. And sometimes a slower movement is kind of like a it's a faith kind of stretched out across a period of time. And this is to really show you point three here. Sometimes we have kind of what we call might call specialist miracle workers, people that work in miracles, people that have miracles happen to them. You know, if you speak to Colin and Raquel, you speak to some of the people, I speak to Jean and Gordon, there's miracles happening all around them. They just pray and they pray and they pray until something happens. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm not quite there myself, but I do kind of warm to that kind of model of, yeah, why don't I just pray for things? If I don't pray, nothing's going to happen. But we also have specialist healers. So someone that's maybe more inclined to maybe like a, a hospital role or somebody that's very, very compassionate, somebody that comes alongside somebody. Sometimes a miracle is not the best thing to happen to somebody who you're praying for who isn't a Christian. It might be too instant, too dramatic. God may want to do it over a period of time. And that might be someone coming alongside who is more compassionate, a little bit more pastoral, that kind of thing. So generally speaking, and it's only a generalization, it do, they do fall into two different categories. Uh, the fourth one is instant spectacular impact, absolutely fantastic. Everybody sees what's going on, it's brilliant. Opposed to, it's often a learning experience with healing. So I learned an awful lot through the fact that my toe went down, as did Lynn, who was the person that was praying for me, as did the whole of the Alpha group. It was something we learned about, oh yeah, sometimes when you're praying for something and it appears nothing is happening, you can still have faith that something will happen tomorrow or overnight or next week. Miracles tend to go with prophecy. And uh, healing tends to go with the more kind of compassionate heart. So you see someone like Elijah or Isaiah in the Bible or John the Baptist. They're very direct. They're very con controversial. They don't care what they're going to say, but miracles often happen around those kind of people, particularly if you read the accounts of Elijah. Whereas the more compassionate people, maybe like John in the Bible, John the Apostle, it kind of happens around him, and he's often the person that notices what's going on, but then you find it's Peter that does something first. Like when they're in the boat and the storms are uh, raging and Jesus walks on the water. John says, oh, it's the Lord, but Peter jumps out the boat and does something. So Peter's the prophet, John is the compassionate pastoral one, and it tends to be a slightly different way of doing things. So it's a way to look at it to say, okay, I could be an instant person, I could be a bit of a slower person or more meditative person. It doesn't really matter as long as the job gets done. So don't give up faith. Just actually look 
at what's going on in your life. Uh, so we don't have any more. Oh, the PA team's gone as well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to finish there, and we're going to pray. Uh, I said we're going to finish early today because uh, we have had the book uh, sale this morning. Why don't you stand up, uh, and we will pray and see what the Holy Spirit wants. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Lord, I pray that you won't categorize us this morning after what I've just said, but you will encourage. You will give us compassion, Lord. You will give us faith. You will help us to see why things happen the way where they do around us. And it's diff- maybe different to other people, Lord. I'm just going to ask the Lord to, to lift your encouragement and your faith and your mood about these things in your mind and in your soul. So come, Holy Spirit. I pray for an increase of faith, Lord, an increase of miracles, an increase of, why don't I just try this? An increase of, I'm going to pray before things happen in the future. An increase of, you did it 2,000 years ago, Lord, you can do it today. Same God, same power. What is it in your life or in the life of those around you that needs a miracle? What's not shifting? Just lift that up to Jesus now. Come, Holy Spirit. So we experienced a miracle in the week in that Wednesday it didn't look good on Ofsted and Thursday everything was fine because we prayed. You prayed, we prayed. It was pretty miraculous. What needs a miracle in your life? What needs a miracle in your family's life? Calm, Holy Spirit. Calm, Lord. Somebody's got a muscle strain in their back that's not healing. I think it's on the left side. Someone's been praying for a relative for six years. And Jesus says... uh, This is it. This is the miracle. Somebody's had a car accident and some things hurt that won't heal. We just lift all these things up to you, Lord, and everything else that's on our minds, Lord Jesus. We lift these up, Lord. You know we don't do hype here, so it's not going to whip up anything here. It's going to simply ask God to move. Send your power, Lord.
if you wanted prayer for something specific, uh, don't go without receiving some. Come and give me a shout. Or have a chat with Laura or somebody else that you trust. Uh, give it a try this this week, guys. I'm going to ask God that God prompts you to pray a miracle into your life, into the life of those around you. Lord, I ask for miracles this week. I ask for instant and I ask for healings, Lord. I ask for long-term ones, Lord, that things would change, Lord Jesus. Things would change dramatically, Lord. And I pray that you will nudge us to pray first in our situations, in our lives, in our week, Lord, in our workplaces, in our home, on the streets, Lord, at the school gates, in the pubs, Lord, that you would give us a chance to pray. Wonderful. Thanks, folks. So if you want prayer, give us a shout. Uh, we don't have a set-down team, so if you could set down the things around you. That would be really helpful today.